Welcome to this Ash Wednesday devotion. Todd and I are at church. It's Tuesday afternoon. We've been watching the weather forecast and seeing how the snowstorm is supposed to be unfolding. We received uh, an alert uh, a couple hours ago that said, Spectrum expects to lose internet during the storm, so there's likely no chance we can even do this online for Wednesday night. So our Wednesday night, Ash Wednesday, worship service at 7 p.m. is canceled. We're recording this devotion so that you can watch it anytime. On Sunday this week in worship, we'll be doing the Ash Wednesday service of course, shifting it around a little bit, um, but the content will be there for you on Sunday. You can join us in worship online or in person at 9 o'clock or at 10.30, and we welcome you to come and participate then. Um, since we aren't doing a worship service Ash Wednesday, I wanted to give you an opportunity to be in a time of devotion as we enter the season of Lent together. The devotion is coming from Kate Bowler's work, Bless the Lent. We actually have 40 days to reflect, play, pray, and bless our imperfect lives. Before we get into her work, though, a reminder about what Ash Wednesday is. Our ancestors in faith used ashes as a sign of our repentance, a symbol of uncertainty and the fragility of our human life. Like them, as we live out our days, we have tasted the ashes of hopelessness. We have walked through the ashes of loss and pain, and we have stood knee deep in the ashes of our brokenness. Let us pray. God of our lives, out of the dust of creation, you have formed us and given us life. May the ashes we receive not only be a sign of our repentance and death, but reminders that by your gift of grace in Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, we are granted life forever with you. Amen. These are selections from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, only you, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness. Even in the womb, you taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my inequity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right and steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. I do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. In her work about Lent, Kate Bowler writes, on Ash Wednesday, we make the sign of the cross on our foreheads as we remember that we are made from dust and to dust we will return. Do that with me right now. You don't have ashes with you. I didn't bring them in with me for now, but a cross on your forehead. I am from dust, and to dust I will return. 
We are as fragile as dust. Our lives are fragile, and yet we continue to work to release our burdens to God and to live into the light of God's love and God's grace. Kate wrote, Blessed are we who are fragile. We were made from dust, and to dust we will return. But the reality of our inherent fragility, what makes us human, shouldn't be shameful. Instead, God blesses the very dust that we are made from, from the beginning when we were formed in our mother's womb until we return to God. This dependence on God's love and compassion may feel countercultural, but it is exactly what we have been made to do. She goes on to describe that our experience of our own fragileness is often on a spectrum. Some days we're more aware of it and we might have tears in our eyes or feel more tired than normal or more dependent on others to help take care of us and to see us through, to walk with us through the tough stuff. But other days we feel more durable, more aware of our strength, our ability to get up and go. So where are you today? Where do you find yourself? Are you closer to fragile or durable or maybe somewhere in the middle? We know that we all have moments when we feel more like dust, when our inability to care for all that we need to care for and do, that all that we need to do just seems hard, and getting through each moment feels difficult. But we know that God walks with us through it all, that we are never alone. Kate wrote, Our culture tries to convince us that perfection is possible if we just try a little bit harder. We can have it all if we just master our mornings or if we can check off all of the things on our to-do list, if we can just finally and once and for all get it all done. Maybe we'll feel better if we start taking that exercise class or eating in a certain way. Maybe our families will be happier if we take that one great vacation together. Maybe we'll be happier or somehow live a better life if we do this or that. But what if things aren't getting better no matter how much we try? What if perfection in the way we imagine it just really truly isn't attainable? for our lives. Maybe it's not even possible. We have all, at some level, drunk deeply from the myth that our lives can be made perfect. But here's the truth. We're never going to be perfect. You're never going to have a perfect life, a perfect marriage, a perfect career. No matter how hard you work at it, no matter how much time you spend on it, we are just one of a long line of imperfect yet deeply loved children of God. So as we move into this season of Lent on Ash Wednesday or Ash Sunday, as we'll be doing it this year, I want you to hear these words of benediction and blessing. It is entitled, A Blessing for This Beautiful, Limited Day. Blessed are we who see the impossibility of solving today. It can't be done. God, there are lists on lists and errands on errands and a taste like tin in our mouths of the unfinishedness and the imperfectibility of our lives. Are we counting items instead of knowing what counts? God, help us live here 
seeing the whole truth of what is. Blessed are we who walk toward the discomfort, bringing what gifts we have with our suffering too, whether it's illness or loss or grief or betrayal, confusion or powerlessness. Blessed are we who scoot up close so that we can whisper our loves, our fears, all the things that are too heavy for us to carry alone, and all that wish we wish we could hold on to for just a little longer. Show us what we love. Show us what we never want to lose. And show us that we no longer need here in this beautiful, limited day. All that we need to do is place our trust and our hope in you. Amen. Please join us on Sunday as we continue this conversation about a holy Lent, the ashes of this season, and all that we will do as we live in God's holy presence. We'll see you Sunday.